All right, welcome to part two of the factoring videos. Uh, today we'll be talking about factoring by grouping. Uh, the last video was common factors. You just found things that were similar and factored them out of the expression. Uh, sometimes it's not going to be so obvious what's common in the expression. Sometimes you have to move things around, regroup them, even make decisions as to what you want to factor out. So let's go ahead and begin with this first problem. We have 2AB plus B plus 2AC plus C. And for the first time, we're going we're gonna to do it, uh, we're going to group the terms containing B and the terms containing C, okay? So those are pretty well grouped already. You got your C's on the right and your B's on the left, right? So let's group them to start. So first step may help just to write it in parentheses from here. right and that's the grouping aspect of it now in each one of these you can find like terms so on the one that's on the left we have 2ab plus b we can actually factor a b out of that 2a plus 1 is what we get left there and on the right we can factor a c out we get 2a plus 1 Whoa, now look what we have. We have 2a plus 1 on the left and the right. We can factor that out as well, can't we? Because it's a like term, it's common terms. And this would have been very difficult to see from this original problem just thinking on the same strategy as the last video. So this video is about grouping them first and then using the common factor ideas you learned in the last video. So anyway, we factor out the 2a plus 1 what becomes of the b plus b and c? I just kind of gave it away. It becomes b plus c. All right. So this is the factored version of this. But a point should be made that you don't. In this problem, you really don't have to fact group group the b's and c's together. Uh, you could also group the a's together. So what that would look like is you pull. You just readjust this one over here and push this one over here. All right. So let me change the color so there's no confusion. So I'm going to rewrite what I just said I was going to do. Move this here and move this here, which I'm allowed to do. So I get 2AB plus 2AC. See, I linked the A's together. They're now next to each other. And then I have plus B plus C. All right. Now, here I can factor. Here, there's no like terms. There's nothing else that can be done to this portion here. All right, but this most definitely, I can factor out. What does it look like? Uh, I can factor out two a. I can factor out two a. All right, and what that gives me is two a, and then this becomes b, right? and then this becomes plus C. Now if I put it back together, distribute 2AB plus 2AC. 2AB plus 2AC. Okay, so we have the same thing here. And this second one is plus B plus C. All right. Whoa, here we go again. Instead of 2A plus 1 this time being the common factor between the two, now it's B plus C, but we could work it the same way. What is in front of this B plus C? If you had to imagine a number here, what would it be? It'd be a 1, right? So I'll factor out 2a plus 1. Add a, I'll factor out the b plus c, and what I get is 2a plus 1. All right, because it's 2a times b plus c plus b plus c times 1. So this is correct. And just an example of how by just choosing different items to group can, can change the actual process that you go through. But if you look at these two expressions, they're 100% equivalent. All right. Whoop. So that's factoring by grouping. Let's do a couple more problems. All right, so here's another example of factoring by grouping. Notice if you're trying to just use the original approach of common factoring, finding similarities in between each part of these expressions, you just won't find something that's similar amongst all of them. So that's why grouping is so important, being able to kind of move things around a bit in order to uh, be able to recognize different similarities in the expression. 
So for this one, um, let's go ahead and group our x's together and our main y's together. I mean, in the, when it comes down to this, it's pretty much decision based. You make a decision as as to what you want to factor. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll just start grouping. So this looks pretty nice already. We have twos and fours and x's, so that looks pretty good. We'll keep that in parentheses here. So 2x minus 4x squared y minus and here we have a 3 and a 6, those are like or similar, we could factor those. And we have y's in each one of these, which we could factor those as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor out, or first we'll just rewrite the term as minus 3y. Now careful here, uh, if you put a plus here, plus 6xy squared, what's going to happen with this negative is it's going to distribute through, right? And you're going to actually have a negative, so that's not the same. So in order for you to keep this the same, for you to keep this equal or to have the same expression, you actually have to put a minus here. So that way, if you distribute this back through, you get negative 3y, because imagine this is negative 1, so you're going to distribute negative 1 through each one of these terms. You get negative 3y, negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6xy squared, which is the same as up there. So that's why you have to uh, put the negative here. All right? So moving along. On the left-hand side, what do we have that's common? The 2 and the x, right? So we're going to pull out 2x. So if I take 2x out of 2x, all I'm left with there is 1. And if I pull out 2x out of 4x squared y, what do I get? Minus 2xy, right? Now, what's common on this side? Well, 3y, right? So we're going to go minus 3y. And uh, if we pull out 3y out of this, we're left with 1, right? And if we pull out 3y out of this one, we're left with negative 2xy. All right? And like the last example, notice now that we actually have more common terms now. It's funny how that works. So we can actually factor out those as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We get 1 minus 2xy times 2x minus 3y. Now notice if you distribute, let's go ahead and distribute this back through just to check our answer. So distributing the 1 first, we'll get 2x and then distributing it. So we distribute it there. Now we're going to distribute it here. So we get minus 3y. We have a minus 2xy times a 2x, which is minus 4x squared y. We have a minus 2xy times a minus 3y. And that is a positive 6xy squared. So we have 2x, 2x, minus 4x squared y, minus 4x squared y, minus 3y, minus 3y, 6xy squared, and 6xy squared. So this is the final answer. This is factored completely in that sense. So um, let's go ahead and do one more quick example. And then we will end the video. In the next video, we'll talk more about factoring. All right, so we have 2m cubed n plus m squared plus 2m n squared plus n. And you're asked to factor it completely. All right, so. Remember, we're doing factoring by grouping, so you want to kind of look through the equation, figure out what's similar, what's not similar, and start grouping those things together. So right off the bat, I noticed the two m's and n's uh, in the first term and in the third term here. I noticed these two are similar, so I'm going to move this close to his buddy here. So we get 2m cubed n plus 2m n squared plus m squared plus n, right? Now, the things I noticed that were similar in these was actually the 2m n, right? So we're going to go 2m n. We're going to factor that out of this portion. So 2m n out of 2m cubed n 
What does that leave remaining? m squared. And if I factor out 2m in squared, or 2m in from 2m in squared, what does that leave? Because the 2 is covered, the m is covered, there's one extra in, so in. And that's going to be plus m squared plus in. Notice, there are now more like factors in this expression. So we can factor out m in squared plus 1, or m, m squared plus in, I mean. So that gives us m squared plus n, and it's going to be, well, the first one is 2mn, and then it's going to be plus 1 for the second one. Cause, does that make sense why it's plus 1? Cause here's this term here. So if we're factoring m squared plus n out of each one, we're left with 2mn plus 1. And if you distribute back through, you will see that that is equivalent to this first expression. So I hope that makes factoring by grouping a little bit more clear. Uh, in future videos, I'm going to try to tackle the factoring second degree polynomials, which is a little bit more difficult to teach. So I hope this all makes sense. If something doesn't make sense, please leave me a comment. Maybe I can fix or adjust how I word or teach this uh, specific topic.